To make a s'more, first you take the gram, you stick the chocolate on the gram, and then you roast a mallow. When the mallow's flaming, you stick it on the chocolate, and then you cover it with the other end, and then you stuff. Hello everyone, and welcome to a glorious candle making video. I'm Leah Mouse, if you don't know, but I'm sure you do, as it says so right there somewhere on my channel name, Leah Mouse. It's me. If you are new here, welcome. And if you're not new here, you are new here, maybe, I don't know, uh, you know that I make scented candles. That's right. Many, 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 many different types of scented candles. In fact, my shop and website is called Underworld Connection because it is, in fact, your connection to the underworld. I do mostly like spooky alternative scented candles, but there's a few, you know, other ones in there that basically anybody could enjoy. People have been after me for a really long time to make a candle making video. I made one a long time ago, but it is very outdated and, well, it's embarrassing. Now I figured it'd be good to make like a current video and make some candles that I'm actually gonna have for sale in my shop so you guys can see the process, see what goes into it, see how it's made and get a little inspired, you know, whatever, if you wanna start making candles. Believe me, there's no learning curve. Took me a year to figure that out, my God. And before we get any further into the video, I would like to finally, at long last, apologies for the delay, I've been busy, <laughs> announce the winner of my giveaway contest from my last video that I had, who will win five candles of their choice, any of the candles I sell in my shop. The winner is... Savannah from the Bronx, New York. Is it the Bronx or is it just Bronx? I don't know, it says Bronx on the address label. But anyway, Savannah from Bronx, New York. I don't know how to say your last name, so I'm not even going to try. If that's you, get a hold of me, leave a comment, um, let me know you saw this, and get in touch with me on my Facebook page, on the Underworld Connection Facebook page, if you would please, and we will set you up with five candles of your choice. I will be doing more giveaways in the future. I haven't orchestrated another one just yet, but I will, I promise because I really like doing giveaways because it's so much fun and I really like to give something back to you guys because you guys are so awesome and supportive. Now, back to the video at large. So I've got my big case of wax back here. This is my candle making area back here where I got all my equipment, all my fragrances and all my colorants and things like that. Uh, this is our glorious kitchen which doubles as my workspace because, well, that's the nature of it. Today, we are gonna be making some wonderfully scrumptious smelling campfire s'mores candles inspired by, of course, the favorite summer slash fall treat. We're right here in the cusp between summer and fall right now. It works, I figured it'd be a nice little thing. We're gonna make 10 of them today. Like I said, these will be available for purchase in my shop at the release of this video, so, you know. Pick one up if you want to on underworldconnection.com after you see me do it. So let's get started. So I've got my candle jars all set up right here. I have all the stuff to make the wicks set up right here. These are for the wicks. We've got pouring pots. One's gonna be for the graham cracker layer. One's gonna be for the chocolate layer. The other one's gonna be for the marshmallow layer. And of course we have the pot that looks gross, but don't worry, none of the wax actually touches it because we are going to be using the double boiler method, which is how you should always heat wax, no matter what anyone tells you. Oh my God, I'm so short. <laughs> so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my wicks. Just gonna unravel a little bit here. The cats love it when I do this. They, they always find me and they're like, ooh, the end of the wick, I'm going to play with that. Boom, wicks. Next you're gonna need some wick tabs. So what I have here is, it's actually a jewelry tool, but it works really, really well. It's kind of like pliers, but the ends are rounded. They're not like clampy and flat. So it's actually the perfect tool for this. If it would focus, that would be fantastic. But no, no, no. Okay, so the wicks are all done and I put them in the jars. Let me just slide you over here a little bit so you can see everything that's going on. Wunderbar, all right. What I use to hold the wicks in place are these little bamboo skewer things. I just kind of cut them into pieces. They got wax drippings all over them because obviously that's what they're used for. But I just take one of these, take the wick, 
wrap it a little bit around the top, pull it taut at the bottom so that it's as straight up and down as possibly can be and straight. So now that I have all my wicks in place, it is time to turn on the burner because we gotta let this start heating up. I put it at, if you have a dial on your gizmo cooking apparatus, some people call it a stove. I usually go about at four. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There we go. Tis done. So we are heating up our pot. Next thing we have to do is put some wax into these pouring pots right here. Oh, by the way, apologies for the schmutz on my shirt. We had a makeup explosion incident when we tried to use the NYX um, foundation earlier and it got clogged and it decided to spray all over me, which I didn't appreciate. I'm trying to hunker down some of the frame here. These are gonna be four layer candles, which is something I don't normally do. Normally my candles are only two layers. I have a couple that are three, but uh, this one's gonna be four because we're gonna make the s'mores, you know, the graham cracker, the chocolate, the marshmallow, and then another graham cracker on top. 10 candles is what we're doing today. This is gonna be my graham cracker pot. One full heaping scoop from this jar is usually one layer, so half a candle. Oh my God, I have to do math. I don't like math, oh my God. I'm so bad at math, this is awful. I just know what to do, but explaining and showing my work, I am so awful at. I'm just like, I just know what I'm doing. 10 scoops of this, because we're gonna reserve half of it for the top layer, because we want it to be the same color and everything. So, one, four, even 10. So this is gonna be our graham cracker layers. And now we're gonna fill the chocolate layer right here. So this is gonna be less than half of a candle, so less than one layer. <laughs> this is even worse math, <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> well, while I'm figuring that out, I'm at least gonna throw this on to the melting apparatus to let it start to go. I have to do quantum physics to figure this out. 10 candles, this is gonna be a quarter of a layer, so five. Jeez, it's not that hard. What is my problem? It's gonna be our chocolate and then our marshmallow. This is my white pouring pot. It is absolutely 100% dedicated to nothing but white wax. So we're gonna do a little bit more than five on this one. Oh my God, I shouldn't have been talking. I lost count, was that four? Chocolate marshmallow. So while our graham cracker layer is melting over there, what we need to add to it is some dye to give it some color. So I've got my little box of dyes here that I use, which is just magnificent. I have them in order by number slash color because I am a nerd and I'm stupidly annoyingly organized like that. So we are going to grab the plain brown color flakes from Rustic Essentials. I'm gonna use about half of what's in this bag, which isn't too much. All right, that'll be kind of a nice lighter brown Color. But the thing with soy wax is it's naturally white. It's not like paraffin wax, which is clear and you can add anything to it. In fact, you have to add white dye to paraffin wax to make it white. Soy wax is naturally white. So any colorant you add to it, you have to factor in that it's gonna like white it out. You know, it's gonna naturally wanna gravitate towards a lighter color. So if you want a really bold, robust color, you gotta add a lot of coloring. And if you want it to be lighter, you just add a little bit and the white will work with it and just kind of fade it out a little bit. Our brown dye is melting in there very nicely. And while we're waiting for this to melt, I'm gonna go ahead and mix together the colorant in my chocolate. So this is the pouring pot for what's gonna be the chocolate layer. So I'm gonna take that same brown. Now I'm revealing a trick of my trade here, so I hope you appreciate this. So I'm gonna take the rest of this brown and I'm gonna put it in here, but we want a really, really, really dark brown. So I'm gonna bust into this other bag that I have here and add a little bit more. It's gonna be a little bit more brown. I know you can't see what I'm doing, so I'll angle it down because I'm not a selfish bastard. So I got a little bit more brown. I'm just gonna add even more. So we want a nice, dark, rich brown. Now, the thing about brown is that's fine and good that to get the chocolate color, you need black, but not too much. It just darkens it up just enough that it gives it that really rich, deep chocolate color. So I'm just gonna grab a couple of these little flakes, the minutest amount here, and just boop, boop. Okay, so that's gonna give us a nice chocolate color right there. And of course, we don't have to add any colorant to the marshmallow one because it's white anyway. So I've got my little handy stirring stick, which is also one of those bamboo skewer things. It's really good to use wood as a stirring apparatus. 
apparatus. I'm just gonna stir this up a little bit, break the wax up because sometimes when it melts, it tends to melt into a big chunk, which we don't want because it'll take longer to melt and all that stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and add my graham cracker fragrance right now, which <laughs> doesn't sound like a graham cracker fragrance, but it honestly is the best one that I've found. It's actually called Welcome Home by Rustic Essentials. It's a pretty strong smell, so I don't have to add too much. We're making 10 candles and we wanna make sure that this is good for both layers. Poured in most of the bottle actually, and I'm just gonna stir it up. Make sure it gets pretty well incorporated. Sorry, I'm all the way over here now. All right, we're ready to pour. Oh, that smells like grape cracker. Okay, so we'll, I'm just gonna pour the bottom layers. One gram cracker. I'm not used to pouring with this much wax at one time. So, pardon my unsteady hand here. It's a little slushy. We have a little less wax left than I thought we would, so we're just gonna have to add more on the other end of this. That's totally okay. Little wax pellets all over the place. Stop messaging me, I am trying to make a video. So now that the bottom layers of these are all poured, I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure all these wicks are straight. Since they're already taut and up and down pretty well, it's pretty easy to reposition them. Now we gotta let these cool before we can do anything else. So I will see you back here in a little bit once these are cool and then we will pour the chocolate layer. <laughs> Bottom layers are cooled. And see that nice graham crackery color that they have? Yeah, that's what we were going for. It sure smells like graham crackers in here. Oh my God. Oh man, yeah, that's amazing. And Houdini's gonna demonstrate how to pour the chocolate layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my uh, water on again. We're gonna put the pot with the chocolate colored wax into the ball saw. So once that gets all melted, uh, we will come back and add the chocolate fragrance and pour the layers into the candles on top of the graham cracker layers. I think I need a s'more now. All right, so we can see the wax for the chocolate layer melting. It's gonna be this really, really nice dark brown, this nice chocolatey brown. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a stir to get those giant clumps broken up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the chocolate fragrance. The fragrance is Chocolate Layer Cake by Rustic Essentials, and it is the best chocolate fragrance that I have found thus far. Oh my God, oh, that smells divine. Okay, so we're, this is a very, very, very strong scent, so we don't need too much of it. So I'm just gonna go like that, give it a little stir. Now we are ready to pour the chocolate fragrance. And the thing to remember also about when you're pouring wax and mixing the colors and everything is that it's, it's gonna cool to a lighter color than what it looks like when you initially mix it and pour it. Don't those just look awesome? Let me tell you what, they smell awesome. That is one awesome smell. So now we gotta let that cool before we can pour the marshmallow layer. Okay, so our chocolate layers have cooled very nicely now and they look like chocolate and it smells so good. I just want to like face plant into these candles. And now we're gonna do the marshmallow layer. <laughs> this is the wax for our marshmallow layer. It's gonna be white and the fragrance we will be using for this one is Campfire Marshmallow by Rustic Essentials. It's got a really nice toasted marshmallow smell to it because a marshmallow fragrance by itself doesn't have much aroma. So the reason we went with the campfire marshmallow is because it's got that extra little zing of like the toastiness in it, you know, and you can really smell like the gooey, you know, from the flame with the, with the cooking and the, and the, 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 the toastiness the, 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 with the crunchy. You know what I'm saying, right? So that's what we're gonna be using for our marshmallow fragrance as soon as this thing melts. Oh 
Okay, the wax is melting now. So as you can see from this excruciatingly odd and very high up angle that I've had to zoom in to uh, achieve, our white wax is almost completely melted. So this is when I'm going to add in the fragrance and we're gonna do a little bit more of this one because it is not as strong of a scent as the chocolate or the graham cracker. But all of these blending together very nicely as it burns down will really give that whole s'mores vibe and it should be amazing, yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my heat, let that melt the rest of the way. I'm gonna pull it off of the heat and the heat from the wax already inside the pot will continue to melt those last little chunks and the rest of it will cool down to a nice pouring temperature. All right, and now we're ready to pour our marshmallow layer. I'm gonna make it about the same thickness as the chocolate so that that top graham cracker layer will be just about even with the bottom one. Of course, soy wax does pour clear. Remember how I said it's white, but since it's in its melted state right now, it will cool to a white color, back to its natural state. So even though it looks clear now, and you can see the brown through it and everything, it will be white when it cools. So the last thing that we have to do is just wait for the marshmallow layers to cool, and then we'll come back with our graham cracker layers. So as you can see, our marshmallow layers are cooling nicely. They're still not quite cool on the top, so I won't be pouring yet. However, you see they are cooling to a nice marshmallow white color. That just looks so good, and it smells so good. You have no idea, oh. Who's calling me now? I got marshmallow all over me. Kentucky? Oh, you Our s'mores candles have cooled to a point where I'm comfortable heating up the wax for the top graham cracker layer. Now, if you recall, we used a little bit more of the graham cracker wax for the bottom layer than was anticipated. So we have to add a little bit more to this pot to be able to top off the candles properly. And now I'm going to put this in the already warming pot. Excuse the cat hair, cats. You know. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more of the brown dye because we added so much more white wax in there. So just a couple of little flecks. Okay, our wax is almost completely melted, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more of the Welcome Home scent, which is the graham cracker scent, since we added more wax, just to make sure we get that good fragrance on the top of the candle. It's very, very important, because that's the first thing you smell. Okay, our wax is good and melted now, so we're gonna remove it from the heat, let it sit for a second, and then pour. So I have finished pouring our s'mores candles. And of course that top layer is going to cool into the lighter color that is the bottom layer there. And then we'll have a really nice set of candles that look like campfire s'mores. Okay, so our candles are cooled down now and they look absolutely scrumptious. So now that our candles are completed, all that's left is to, well, put the swirl on top, of course, my signature Underworld Connection swirl. And of course, we have to affix the labels. These are the labels that I created and printed out myself. So I'm just going to cut these into nice candle-sized labels. And then we're gonna go ahead and put those on before we do our swirls. Look how cute those look! Don't they look cute? And I love that you can turn it and see all the layers of the s'more. Oh my god. I really, really like how these turned out. These look so cool. <laughs> oh my goodness. So now we gotta put the swirls on these bad boys. So we're gonna just swirl these with a nice white swirl. This is the Underworld Connection Signature Wax Swirl that we're doing. Again, the soy wax is 
clear when it's melted. And this is not easy, believe me. See, you can kind of see the swirls. I know already they look clear, but once they start cooling here in no time at all, they will be a nice white. So as you can see, they're cooling into a nice white swirl on top of our top graham cracker layer. God, these are just so cute. I just love how they turned out so much. And of course, they would not be complete without a lid on each one. A nice black screw top lid, which we will affix thus. There we go. Okay, so here is our completed scented candle with all four layers of graham cracker, chocolate, marshmallow, and graham cracker because that is how you make a s'more. Complete, of course, with signature wax swirl on top. I'm so happy with how these turned out. These are super, super cute, and I love them so much, and oh my god, the fragrance is to die for. I'll tell you what, and then it gets even better when you burn down through it and you get to you get to smell every single one of those layers, the graham cracker, the marshmallow, the chocolate, and the graham cracker. It's all gonna blend together so nicely as it burns down. And I can just, oh my goodness, yeah, I'm definitely keeping one of these for myself. So thank you guys for joining me on my very first Underworld Connection candle making video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like and a comment down below if you wanna see more, and don't forget to subscribe. I really, really, really had a lot of fun making this video, and I really wanna do more. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you stick around to see some more candle making videos. And every time I make candles, they will always be featured in my shops. That's underworldconnection.com, and also on Etsy, Etsy.com slash shop slash underworld connection and of course these will be available for sale in my shops now that the video is released So if you want to go ahead and grab one of these bad boys that we just made go for it And I got tons of other candles I got like five new ones that are pretty cool that just came out and people are seeming to love those as well I have mystery boxes of all shapes and sizes that you can choose from and just be surprised by whatever candles you get And I also have wax melts if you can't for some reason burn candles wherever you are So be sure to check out my shop Thank you guys for watching and I had a lot of fun making candles with you today. See you next time. Okay, bye